Hey guys, how's it going today? So, uh, I'm going to show you how to dismount a tire manually. Uh, you may be getting a little tired of watching tire videos, and maybe I'll be done with them here soon, or maybe I'm just wheeling around. Anyways, let's get started. So a couple of tools you're really going to need is a hammer, some screwdrivers to pull the bead up over the wheel. You're going to need something to break the bead, whether it be a bead breaking hammer or any other fashion of breaking beads. Harbor Freight sells one that you mount to the floor. I prefer this bead breaker. Uh, so I'll get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is let the air out of the tire. So I'll just go ahead and do that. After all the air is out, you're gonna to wanna to put it on your bead breaker of whatever method you're wanting to do it with. And you're gonna to wanna to work the bead. Sometimes you can get lucky. Pop the bead and one to go. And you're gonna to wanna to flip it over, get the other bead. There we go. Make sure it's all the way off. The next step is going to be actually prying the bead up and over. Now there's special tire spoons for this, which they do sell. But if you're careful, you can do it with some long screwdrivers. You're basically just gonna wanna work, take little bites, and try not to get too crazy. You wanna work your way around. If you're fixing a flat, you might wanna Mark on the tire like I did here, you can kind of see it with tire chalk to get it. So that way, oh, come on. You can get your, if the tire is balanced or you want your valve stem back in the same spot, keep it in the camera, you can do that. Something that also helps is if the tire is warm and it's not cold out, and working on tires when it's hot out isn't always fun, but it helps out. So after you get one, the first bead broke, you want to flip it over and you're going to want to get in under that tire like so. I like to try to get it so it's got the pressure on it as I work it. Careful not to hurt yourself with this. This tire sidewall isn't that strong. And then just kind of work your way. You're gonna use the leverage of the screwdriver or tire tool. Get another bite here. Now it's going to start to roll it a little bit better. Get that pressure so that way, try not to beat your wheel to death. You can work the tire out and not hit the camera so much. Okay, make sure I, you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Really should have looped this up a little bit. Run a little bit better situation because I keep hitting it. I might have to apply a little bit of lube, whether it be 
WD-40, some soap. You just need a little bit of something. And you don't want to beat, beat on the rim too much and dent it, because that'll cause you more issues later. I'm gonna flip this around and drop all the dirt out. Probably wise to wash your wheels out as well. So I'm gonna replace the valve stem first because I'm tired of these super long ones on mine. These are meant for hubcapped wheels. I'm not running hubcaps anymore. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is come in at the back. Cut it off. That way you can pull it out through that hole. You wanna make sure you get the right size otherwise it won't do you any good. Next step is you're gonna want some sort of puller. You're gonna put the valve stem in there this bad boy on there and then you're just gonna kind of work it through and you'll feel it pop in and you're good to go going on is slightly easier you're gonna want to make sure whether uh, you're working on white wall side or black wall I prefer black wall some people like their white walls so to each their own but you're going to want some sort of lube. Well, what I have here is a bunch of old shampoo. Dawn dish soap works. Or any soap, just something. Something to lube everything up so it slides on pretty easy. And you're going to want to work it on. Get that out of the way. You can see that on the camera. Basically the same thing you did earlier. Slowly. Uh, you don't want you don't want this beat to pop on while you're going on, though. It'll make it a little bit more difficult. Let's see if I can get this. You guys can see it. Hopefully, you can see this. Basically, all you're going to do is use your body weight to help push this tire on. One side's on. Same thing for the other side. You want to lube it up. Make it so it just slips on. All you're looking is, you could even use water if you really had to. That's all you got. Get one side to start down. Just use your knees. And I should say this is for kind of older tires. Not older, but I should say smaller. 14s and 15s. I don't know if you can really do this with 16s and 17s. I don't have any experience doing that. All oh, my cars are a little older. You don't want that noise that it just made, the tearing noise of the rubber. You want to be very careful. And it's on. Now, if this was a tire you just repaired uh, for a flat or something you just dismounted, it should sit a little bit wider than this. I'm going to have a hard time setting this bead. As you can see, the bead needs this piece of the tire right here. I don't know if I can see that. Right in here, it needs to be up in here. Usually, you can pop it out like that. These are brand new tires, and they're kind of squish. So, I'm going to get them to air up. Now, what you do is you want to take this, the Schrader valve out of the valve stem so you can put a lot of air to it really quick. That'll help pop the bead out. Being as these aren't, uh, expanded out like the old tires where they'll seat nicely I'm gonna have to do other methods um, but usually you can use just like a uh, take this out and I just use a uh, just a blow gun just to shoot air in there you get it filled up when the beads are all seated they'll pop and then um, kind of go from there just putting the Schrader valve back in really quickly and um, airing it up so we'll just do it the way I was taught. Now the method I'm going to use to get this bead to inflate, I'm going to tell you, is a little dangerous. So don't try this at home, unless you know what you're doing. Not to say I know what I'm doing, but it's the way I was taught to do it. If you do it, you're doing it at your own risk. 
So you're gonna wanna get the wheel mounted up to a point where it's setting and the tire's kind of free floating there. So that way the rear bead is seated. I already have, blow that off a little bit. I already have the air gun attached. I'm gonna keep my Schrader valve handy, preferably in my hand or very close. going to use the can of ether now there's debates about how this that your tires can blow up because it has trapped ether in it just don't squirt a whole lot sounds easy enough to do but it's also kind of a trick basically what I'm gonna do is spray ether all the way around this bead and I run the line out now I'm gonna throw a match on that line that runs out out here that uh, the matchstick doesn't get stuck in the bead and then eventually you'll have to dismount the tire again because it's stuck in the bead and it has a leak. This may take a couple times, but you're, it's going to get a loud pop. The explosion is going to fill the tire up and seat it. I'm going to hit it with the air. That way it keeps air in it. Again, some people debate that this could cause it to um, blow up later on down the road. I've been doing this for years and haven't had trouble with it on my personal vehicles. So again, this is a learning experience. Do not do this at home. This is just me doing this. So again, there are a lot of safer methods, but this is the way I'm going to use. There we go. Oh, I didn't do it soon enough. Uh, that's the trick. The balance. Balance it out. I don't have much ether left. Give it a go again. Nope. And you gotta hit it with air right away. What I like to do You can see it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's smoking a little bit inside. What I like to do is air it up to 30 and then I will let all the air back out to let all the exhausts out. Hopefully it's still warm enough that it stays seated. That's the tr that's the bad thing. If it, if it doesn't stay barely have anything in there right now. Maybe 20. Yep. Take it up to 30, then I'll let all the air back out. Hopefully it doesn't pop the bead back off. And then we'll air it up again. Just gonna let all the smoke and ether out. So it shouldn't contain any ether in it. That's probably gonna be loud on the speakers, so careful. That's probably good. Now we will, you can see I got a little soot on my fingers from that. Now we'll air it up and the tire's good to go. That's how you change a tire by